I'm with uh, Pete. Hi, I'm Pete. Uh, you have made Recompile. Yes. Or are helping to make Recompile. We're about to play it, but first of all, what is it? <laughs> uh, so Re Recompile is a, a kind of an atmospheric uh, hacking adventure, a game that we've been working on for the past three years. Um, it's essentially a Metroidvania, and you are a computer virus, mm -hmm. and you're uh, injected into this mysterious computer system in a virtual world called the mainframe, um, which is homage to some certain uh, cartoons from the past. And the, essentially the story is that you are the catalyst to create the first ever sentient AI. So, uh, Intriguing. Uh, so go ahead, yeah. All right. So where am I now? I'm within... You're within the, uh, the virtual world, um, uh -huh. and you have no abilities at this point, so just kind of explore, see if you can... Uh I've got loads of abilities. <laughs> so I, I would collect that thing there, yeah. So now you have your first weapon. Uh-huh. So, so yeah, let's do this. Okay. So feel free ah. to just kind of mess about. There's no consequences for dying, so you know it's, it's pretty interesting. So I can just jump off and be. Well, you don't have to. But, you know. <laughs> I just wanted to see what would happen. <laughs> Somebody tells me there's no consequences for doing something. I'm gonna do it. Yep. <laughs> well, you know we've got the special effects there. So. Yeah, snazzy. <laughs> So is the idea, have I been put into this world with a purpose, or am I...? Yeah, kind of. So you've been installed into this, uh, into this machine, um, but kind of part of the way through, your programming gets corrupted, so you have no idea why you're there, ah. why you've been installed into this world. But things are going to try and stop you doing whatever you want to do, um, as you will see soon. I see. Uh, there is a kind of narrative going on on the outside world, you know, there's the real world and there's the virtual world. Uh, okay. Um, and the whole game takes place in one second in real time. But obviously, inside your uh, uh, virtual world, it takes a lot longer. Uh, and there is a uh, an exciting kind of dramatic story that's happening on the outside world with a, a war going on. Oh, uh, right. Kind of so, so do we... Uh, see, I was going to ask, do we... Oh, God, I'm being you shot You will at. interact with the outside world somehow. Uh, not in this demo, but, you know, in the right. overarching story, you will be. Yeah, that's the first uh, kind of... Uh, NPC that you nice. Mm. So, if the game is taking this is taking place within a second. Yes. Uh, surely our interactions with the real world must be very interesting. Yes. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're they're quite. Um, there's a, there's a big consequence to the ending of the game essentially, uh, yeah. which you won't find out in this demo. Uh, yes, but it's, uh, it's it's a spoiler. But it's uh, a, you know. We, um, there we go. So in this game, there's also uh, a hacking ability. So if you press Y right now, oh, yeah. you'll be able to uh, kind of move your camera. Uh, so if you change your camera angle, you can kind of see a bit more what's going Snazzy, on. Yeah. Up and down as well. Um, there. And what can I do? So I, I just, so we haven't like influenced hacking completely, but here you can inspect stuff. Uh, you can inspect anything. So if you say if you hover over this guy, ah, yeah. you can see it's got 52 HP, and you can see the path signing that way it's going to go and stuff like that. Eventually, we'll be able to um, hack the environment, so you'll be able to override and uh, disable those logic gates that you saw earlier. Right. And also uh, change enemies' behaviors so that they fight against each other and that kind of thing. So, mm. uh, so it's, it's it's different to a lot of Metroidvania games in terms of interaction with the environment, you can actually hack your way through the game. I see. And is that like, is that just a thing you can freely do, or does it use a resource of some kind? Or? Uh, currently you can just do it, but it's, uh, we're planning on hacking to cost uh, something called bits, mm. which are those green things that you're collecting there when you kill an enemy. Okay, so that you looks see scary, those, I didn't want to go near that. <laughs> so you see those green kind of blobs there? Ah, I they're, see. They're your currency, if you like, that you spend to hack things. Right. Um, obviously, you have to kill things to to uh, to gain bits. Yeah. So that's mm. follow the pipes, and you uh, get to the next bit. Is this the red shimmer? Is like an area to go to? Is that like what you're using to give it a try? <laughs> yeah. So the, the red glitches are basically areas that you've not explored. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, and when you go near them, then they start loading in the level. 
cool. Right, what so now just happened? You now have an ability to jump as much as you like. That is very generous. So this this, uh, this gives you the ability to see where you can go next. I'm pushing. I'm. Yeah, go ahead. You hit the, you hit the floating <laughs> point limit at some point, but. Um, no, that's it. This is we're seeing how far this can go. That's there, there's amazing. no limit, so we could be here a while. <laughs> Uh, right, so right. in the, the new version of the game that we're working on, there's a uh, environmental kind of tours around the game. So there'll be a limitation there. Um, but on, the, on this demo, you're free to just jump as much as you like if you want. <laughs> well, I clearly do. <laughs> uh, I would recommend you now just drop and smash into those pilot crates. Oh, wh which is the smash button? Uh, no, You've just, got a lot just, of time to just, just drop them down. Oh, okay. just, just drop down. You see those green, <laughs> green blobs there? Just go there. Wait, what? That way, that way. Th there are bottom left, bottom left, bottom left. Sweet. It's something you have to see. Okay. Just, okay. just jump, 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 jump on those those uh, pilot crates there. Yeah, that's it. Down here. Uh, you needed to drop them a higher. From the high. That's what we were going. All right. All right. Now do it. There we go. Uh -huh. So there's no reason that exists in the game apart from <laughs> looking cool. Fair no, play. you can actually drop on enemies to, uh, to destroy them as well. So. Oh yeah, it's pretty generous. Isn't it? <laughs> I like it. So that gives you a double jump, which you don't need because you've already got the uh, the infinite one now. But uh, uh, right. Um, so to progress, uh, if you kind of jump a bit higher, you can see there's more glitchy red areas to go to. Mm -hmm. So at what point did you decide you're just gonna let people jump as much right. as they like? So this is the demo that we're using to show the game at rest. Uh -huh. uh, obviously, there's 10 minutes of the game, so in the full game you wouldn't be able to get an infinite jump within the first two minutes. That makes sense. You know, Metroidvania, this will be more of a late ability. Okay. Uh, okay. And there'll be an area in the game where you can't reach unless you have this this kind of ability. So. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, so you now have a dash. Uh, you can kind of reverse. Mm. I was going to say, because surely the moment you can jump anywhere, <laughs> How's it feel? Your, your puzzle limitations. <laughs> like. <laughs> How do you feel powerful right now? I do. I mean, <laughs> I want to blow something up now. Hey, you've just found the uh, the plug for our publisher. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's yeah, we recently announced the game and the partnership with Dear Villagers last month. So, uh, I see, I yeah. see. Well, I'll just awkwardly <laughs> jump past <laughs> this advertising. <laughs> um, We're planning on adding like quite a few kind of Blade Runner style, you know, advertising on there, just a little bit of a tongue-in-cheek type mm, thing. But okay. Yeah. Possibly not just for our publisher, but for your various <laughs> other uh, in-universe <laughs> type stuff, so... In-universe stuff, rather yeah, yeah, than yeah. out of game. I was yeah. going to say, that's, that's cheeky. The reason, the reason I added the, the <laughs> publisher one was we, when we were announcing it, that was part of a gift that I developed. But I left it in the game anyway because it looked cool. So. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so see if you can like land on him. Yeah, that's shooting. a good idea. I can. Yeah. <laughs> what was it? Not bad. I think you just missed it. There you go. And you can also dash into enemies to destroy them as well. Cool. Alright. How am I going to be super powered this time? It's a quantum hoover? I've always wanted a quantum hoover. <laughs> oh, it's a quantum hover. Also good. Also good. Oh, I know. The ability to suck things uh, <laughs> into the void would be quite cool, wouldn't it? So yeah. Maybe I could add that. I mean, oh, there's still time. There's still time. Still time. The quantum, quantum hoover. <laughs> You heard it first time here, folks. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, oh, I'm being shot at and I'm stuttering. Oh, well, yeah, I'm definitely being shot at. Yeah, there's another another guy just right in there. So in terms of enemies, so far... Don't jump in seen... there. Yeah, because that will end oh, the demo. Okay. That will finish the game. That, I got you. In terms of enemies, we've yeah. got these cube guys. Yeah. Uh, what else? So the whole game Might is help. based on uh, Plato's Platonic Solids. So, uh, Do explain. So, right. So, I think Plato theorized that there were several elements in the world. Um, yes. That we now know is not true, but, uh, you know, fire, w earth, water, that kind of stuff. Uh, and each one has a corresponding color and solid. Uh -huh. So, uh, earth is a hexahedron, which, in other words, a cube. Uh, so, we have different biomes in the game, what we'll do, uh, and the cube enemies are going to be part of that biome. And so, for example, the fire enemy will be a pyramid, so a tetrahedron. Uh, and you know octahedron and uh, icosahedron and 
the dodecahedron would be the final kind of thing in the game. So, actually, uh, actually, yeah. and I also love the, 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 the colors of the, the colors of the, the game are also um, have meaning within the law of the universe as well. So. Ah. I mean, I, I am enthralled by the idea of a dodecahedron as a boss. <laughs> like, there's no better boss fight. So, does it? You're saying the story, the story elements to it. Yeah. And we're making a. Well, this whole journey is to create a safe and AI. What are there? Have you explored the narrative? What that means, like in in terms of. Um, uh, okay. Is it? Does this so safe and AI gonna? Is it gonna experience things? Is it yeah, gonna so be a threat we, uh, to the so, humanity? So that's kind of like the the ending of the game. Uh, uh, we want to be the first ever Metrovania to have uh, multiple critical paths. So if you think about traditional metrovanias, you have one way of doing things to pick items up in the right order that they exist. <laughs> you can start jumping away now. Um, for we compile, we want the critical paths to be based on your playstyle. So you can go around like shooting and killing stuff, uh, and that will take you to a different narrative path too if you were to go around hacking things and be more stealthy and more pacifist in your approach. Um, with that, the AI that you create will be based on your personality. So if you're an aggressive player, Interesting. you create an angry AI, and then the ending will be the AI in the real world will start to do things that you don't want it to do. You know, If you think about those Terminator films, then you might uh, imagine it. what kind of ending that would be. Uh, there was five different endings that we're planning on the game, one for each of the um, uh, platonic solids that we have. <laughs> uh, and there will be, uh, there'll be different kind of outcomes based on what kind of AI you create. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's fascinating to me. I love that... Presumably, you don't talk about that, your, your platonic solids in the game. No. But some people, so yeah, no. No, people listen to me, oh, that's a cool triangle. A thing. And you can be like, yeah. platonic solid, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's something uh, that uh, wasn't in the game originally until I hired, or well, I, I started working with uh, James Vincent Marshall, who's my VFX and animation mm -hmm. guy. And he is really super obsessed with platonic solids. <laughs> like, he really loves it. Like. You know, I can see why. Yeah, and, be, uh, and he wanted to add that into the game, and we included it in the law with my writer Faye as well. And we oh, yeah. started doing some crazy stuff with that, and uh, it's it's going to be a pretty crazy story about the kind of ecological situation that we live now on this planet. Okay. You know, you know, there's stuff like uh, the future of our planet, and there's conservation issues and, mm. and, and green issues. And it's stuff interesting like that. you're doing that when. This is yeah. so far removed it from uh, like, what you're you know, actually seeing around you. The, the best science fiction is stuff that is rooted in the issues of today's world. Right? So mm -hmm. we don't want to make a sci-fi game that's just cool. It's 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 got a message, but it's subtle. You know, we don't shove it down people's throats. It's uh, it's something you just have to try. So mm -hmm. yeah. how I'm going to try and time this in the moment <laughs> this end. We're, we're going to do this. We've got a little while. But this stream is going to end the second I hit the ground. That's, that's what will <laughs> happen. <laughs> you were not kidding. I, everything is. There was a floating point in this now. <laughs> okay. Do you think we'll reach that? I don't. Yeah, I, love, I don't know. <laughs> I love you've got a really interesting game here, and I'm just like, how high can yeah. I go? How like? So you know, like I said, the the environment that we've now built will prevent this from happening. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> um, but this is cool. You know, people haven't seen this before, so. <laughs> Mm. Uh, I'm glad to have, to have shone a light into development the process. The abyss right now. <laughs> That's quite calming, isn't it? Oh uh, yeah. It's, would you say it's very meditative? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh. I feel like I can uh, kind of recompile my thoughts here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the space. This is yeah. I like it. All right, we're gonna start falling. I'm, I probably missed. I don't think uh, it's gonna take five minutes to fall. No, no. We'll, we'll hover a bit. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, I will drop us so that I can uh, look at a few other things. Um, so yeah, earlier you were talking about the Metroidvania parkiness of it. Is it that you're essentially going through the same environments, or is it you are totally just going down a different path? Or uh, so as you just a totally different path depending right. on your playstyle. Uh, so you'll see different rooms and different areas depending on how you go. So why did you, know, you decide to make five games <laughs> when you <laughs> could have made one? So I think the end game will be shorter than most motivators because you'll be able to, you know, replay the game right. and try different uh, styles. But you're also, um, you know, we wanted uh, to to kind of evolve the genre where the decisions that you make affect the story, and I think that's something that's lacking in a lot of 
these types of games. Um, I mean, that's the goal anyway. I don't know how well we'd achieve it in the end, but mm -hmm. I, you know, we just wanted to make something that was combining what's on very much on trend right now. You know, Twine, interactive fiction, mm -hmm. Bandersnatch, kind of, you yeah. know, choose your own choices type stuff, uh, and combine that with you know this kind of gameplay. So maybe it will work, maybe not. Mm. But that's that's our goal. Interesting. I would actually um, go into that black hole, not this one, uh, the one that you're about to go into when yes. you're on the floor before the stream ends there's a, there's a little bit of a cutscene at the oh end to okay. have a look at this is very pleasant <laughs> I have to ask what did you think of Bandersnatch? I really if enjoyed the real story for Bandersnatch and not the joke endings yeah you know um, but I really I, I really enjoyed playing it you know I played the whole way through I tried every choice it was really interesting So, if you go back onto that platform and then uh, jump into that crazy black thing over there. And you may finish just in time. Ah. My plan all along. Yeah, we planned this down to a T. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is essentially kind of a tutorial level where it's installing you into the main world uh, so as you can imagine okay. you know similar to like a Zelda game you know you suddenly get injected into a, a massive overworld thing and you can see uh, beautiful scenery uh, but we don't have that in this demo so it's kind of empty here now so. see shot off into the sky yeah from whence I just came and you're now installed mm. I feel I feel different <laughs> so that is weaker power It probably leads on to the plug. <laughs> oh, more plugs. <laughs> <laughs> so we announced last month. Um, yes. And we are currently uh, working on the game for the next year or so. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at releasing, so far confirmed on Steam, uh, next year, 2020. Right. Um, and we're looking at two other platforms as well, but currently no confirmations on, on what that would be yet. But mm. exploring cool. opportunities. Are you doing any... Early access type thing? No early access. It's a narrative-based game, so I don't think that would quite fit the Fair model. Um, so yeah, full full release next year. Mm. Awesome. <coughs> so we've got about one minute left. Kay. I'm going to ask you what is your favourite... You, you uh, touch on a few inspirations for it, but your favourite sci-fi uh, book, film, yeah. novel? Uh, books, series of books, I guess, like the Ian e M. Banks <sighs> stuff. Excellent. Uh, you know, um, it's just it's just amazing the, mm. the 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 world that he's created with the AI living with people, and obviously there's some inspirations there. Absolutely, so, absolutely. Uh, we'll do for the culture and all that stuff. It's uh, interesting, yeah, because in Banks's world, minds are purely benev benevolent. Yeah. Like he doesn't. It's a, it's an interesting one because he never explores really malicious yeah, AI yeah. in any capacity. Yeah. So it's uh, you know there's options there though. Mm. But <laughs> um, it's definitely something I like, and maybe something you're doing as well. Just challenging. Well. Maybe you want, you're not actually, but like that basic assumption that an AI is going to be this massive threat and is going to be evil I isn't think, necessarily the case. I think you have to look at what kind of the AI is not going to think like us. Right? Mm. They have different perspectives based on their kind of initial programming, maybe, or how unpredictable um, you know they might evolve using machine learning and stuff. And we just, there's no way to predict how an AI would react. And I think what we're trying to do is cover that entire spectrum of the different possibilities. Uh, that's something like that might explore. Mm. So, yeah. Great stuff. All right.